Frankie on PC was one of the greatest gaming content creators of the 2010s. His videos were not only entertaining and enjoyable to watch, but they made you feel a type of way whether that was to play the game you would just watch him play or to sit back and watch hundreds of hours of cinematic gameplay which had you on the edge of your seat. I often find myself reminiscing of the times when I would come back from school and see a new video was uploaded to his channel when times were a little simpler and I didn't have a mortgage to pay. But what made his videos so enticing which kept viewers coming back for more? It's fairly simple really. Frankie was a great storyteller. He knew how to keep you engaged and used his fantastic voice commentary to keep you hooked, almost leaving you on a somewhat accidental cliffhanger at the end of every video. Using his light-hearted jokes and subtle editing style, he pieced his story together in a way that wasn't obnoxiously loud or in your face, but kept you engaged throughout. It's insane. You know the last time I used this gun was probably on Essica. Like, that There's zombies in here dude, there's zombies! I'll get the back ones. Maybe I should save these bullets for players. Yeah, yeah. Ah, come here, you stupid. Ah. This was a player. This flies. Oh yeah, nice. Doctor's journal. Twelfth of Jan, twenty eighteen. Stupid Cole shouldn't have abandoned them on the medical. I think it's fair to say that Frankie was ahead of his time on YouTube. The addition of subtitles to parts of his videos to grab your attention in 2012, well before the likes of Mr. Beast making it popular in his viral videos. Furthermore, he would always push that extra mile to make his videos unique and interesting, where so many YouTubers would just record, edit and upload a video, but I'll talk more about that later. Frankie was well known for his gaming commentaries on Battlefield 3, but his Armour 2 DayZ mod video series made him a well known YouTube legend. Now there wasn't anything too groundbreaking with some of his early episodes in the series. It was more of a light insight into the game he was playing and explaining some of the basic survival mechanics that the mod had introduced into the game. At the time, Armour 2 was fairly under the radar in terms of YouTube coverage, but by the fifth episode it had made me beg my parents for a gaming PC just to play the game. I think it's safe to say that at this point in time I had my most memorable gaming moment in my life when Daisy was at its peak and it's hugely down to Frankie's coverage of the game bringing such a large amount of players to it. For anyone who isn't aware of what Daisy is, it's a zombie survival game set in the fictional location of Chinaris where the objective is to survive and fend off hordes of zombies whilst at risk of encountering hostile bandits roaming around the map. Following the release of his first Daisy video in July of 2012, he would go from 65,000 subscribers to 320,000 in just 6 months after releasing 24 videos on DayZ. He would upload the odd commentary and war story in between, but with every release of a new DayZ video, the overall quality of said videos would increase drastically. At the beginning of every video, he would start off where the previous episode had ended, providing the viewers with some sort of backstory and some insight into what he had planned for the current video. Most of my little blue truck to pick up Jack, he uh, he suffered a rather unfortunate accident, if, if you remember, in, in, in episode 18. Nothing to do with me, nothing to do with me whatsoever that he, that he fell off a, a, an eight-story crane. Now the backstory might not have been entirely true, but by starting the video off with some sort of goal in mind, it made you want to stick around and find out how he would go about achieving that goal. By this point, Frankie had made quite the reputation for himself, being seen as the Bambi King, helping out new players, wiping squads of bandits killing unarmed survivors, but controversy would eventually follow. One episode in particular of his DayZ series made me start to question the legitimacy of his gameplay, titled Taviana Episode. 20. Frankie would take on a group of players by himself and ultimately come out on top, despite the odds being stacked against him. Now only one day after the video was released, a reddit post would appear on the Daisy subreddit titled Frankie on PC a hacker. The post was fairly detailed and summarised a few points with evidence, and Frankie would respond to the post himself with counter arguments, but nothing was ever conclusive enough to say that Frankie was or wasn't hacking. At the time, I remember I was disappointed that my favourite YouTuber could have been hacking this entire time, but this wouldn't stop me from watching. At the end of the day, Frankie's videos were made for our entertainment, and they were very good at doing just that. I'm not saying I encourage people to cheat for entertainment purposes, but it does happen today even if you're not aware of it. Unfortunately, this wasn't the only time Frankie was accused of cheating. In June of 2015, Frankie uploaded a video titled Close Call, when he was playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and in the opening segment of the video, he demonstrated a new skill he had picked up called bunny hopping. For those who are unaware, the skill of bee hopping is extremely difficult to perform on standard CSGO servers. However, in the video, Frankie was performing the almost impossible. Shortly after the video was uploaded to Frankie's channel, a CSGO YouTuber by the name of Launders talked about how it was very unlikely that he was able to just pick up the skill in such a short amount of time, and how even experienced players couldn't do anywhere near to what he was doing so consistently. Launders came to the conclusion that Frankie was scripting, but admitted that there was a chance that he was also wrong. Uh, but for my personal opinion, that's it, he was scripting. 
Now this started to raise alarm bells for Frankie's viewers and members of the CSGO community leading to almost everyone accusing him of scripting. However, the situation would quickly escalate when Launder's video was falsely DMCA claimed by Frankie's channel. Now Frankie would go on to respond to Launder's in a since deleted video titled Tired of BS after Frankie's channel moderator took down Launder's video by mistake. In his response, he said that the clip in his close call video was on a private server with modified server commands, making it much easier to be on. All my friend actually did was just copy the settings onto my private server of one of the public bunny hop servers. And you can see here, we're all doing exactly the same thing as I was doing in my video there. But I wanted to show you on an actual matchmaking map what it could be used for. Now the whole situation was completely blown out of proportion when just a simple, hey, this was done on a private server could have avoided the whole situation. During Frankie's DayZ series, a YouTuber by the name of Jack Frags made multiple appearances in the videos. The two had great chemistry on camera and were the main duo of content creators covering the game at the time. How do you actually get down? I suppose if anybody wants this, they could just blow it up anyway. Just down here, look. I'll just prove to you that I wasn't bullsh**. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Did it actually kill you? <laughs> Did that well, kill you? <laughs> may have done that on purpose. <laughs> However, in Frankie's video titled Waterworld Episode 4 on Daisy Standalone, it would be the last time we saw Jack in any of his videos. Over time, we would see the addition of sadder plays into Frankie's videos, which left fans confused as to where Jack had gone. Frankie addressed the question in a deleted video, saying that Jack didn't want to play with Frankie anymore because they were uploading the same content, which was making Jack's videos somewhat redundant. Uh, why I don't play with the person I used to play Daisy with, and um. Basically, one day he turned around to me after we've been playing for about a year and said that we can't play anymore because we're posting the same footage. And obviously, because I'm getting more views on it, it kind of makes his footage a little bit redundant. I did ask him at the time if we could just play one day a week because I knew people liked seeing us play together, but apparently he didn't have time anymore for that. I much prefer that that's actually happened now with hindsight because I wouldn't have started playing with Sada and I'm so much better friends with Sada. Like, we're, you know, we got on absolutely great. It's a con constant laugh the entire time. In March of 2017, Frankie uploaded a video showing us with the behind the scenes work that goes into making one of his videos, and it highlighted that he was on a completely different level when it came to your average record, edit, upload YouTuber. In the video he talks about how Daisy had become a deathmatching game and less about the survival aspects that it was centred around originally. He realised that to continue his Daisy series, he would have to make his own version of the game from the ground up, which allowed for a much more in-depth storyline but at a cost. Now Armour 3's game engine was extremely buggy, and this mix with multiple mods would create delay after the delay and ultimately slowing down his video production. Something simple as a rock being placed at a certain rotation meant that one of his videos was delayed by over two weeks, accompanied by ever building stress to meet upload schedules. Frankly, most content creators would have given up at the sign of a two week delay and scrapped the idea entirely, but Frankie was determined it would never settle for anything less than perfection. In addition to all that, Frankie stated that he would direct up to 40 people at one time on a server to create the desired shot he was looking for, making Frankie essentially a director, actor, scriptwriter, cinematographer, sound designer and editor, putting in the extra work to make his content that much more special. Where are we? This is where that last pilot ended up. There's a clear indicator of how his videos improved in quality throughout his DayZ series. By comparing episode 1 to any of his most recent episodes, it shows how he's blurred the line between what a game is and what a movie is. By achieving this is another sign of how great his videos are, by paving the way for other content creators to barely even scratch the surface of what he has done nearly 10 years later. With all this said, the only question to ask is where is Frankie now? Frankie continued to upload consistently for just over 6 years, however, he posted to his Facebook page in April of 2017, stating that he started to feel concerned about his three latest videos and how they'd been received, which led him to saying that maybe he had to make some changes. After announcing a sort of revamp to the channel in June, being 60% complete on his Facebook page, Frankie would post again in July listing several changes and explaining his feelings towards content creation. His break from YouTube came down to feeling burnt out, after spending the majority of his free time making videos and explaining that something he did for fun had began to feel like work and was always chasing more and more views and engagement, but feeling deterred when videos didn't perform as expected. Expected. He would further state that he privated and unlisted multiple videos from his channel due to music licenses running out and feeling that those videos didn't reflect him or the content he wanted to make in the future. 
Now, how many videos did he remove? Well, enough to reduce his total view count at the time by 250 million views, over a third of his total channel views at the time. A couple of months later, in September of 2017, Frankie would give further insight into how the stress of balancing work and YouTube at the same time had taken a negative impact on his physical and mental health. He made the decision to completely stop working on content creation for four months to try and get things back in order and stop constantly worrying about meeting deadlines to post YouTube videos. Unfortunately, this seemed like it was the end for Frankie, but he would still feature in the occasional live stream or video with sadder plays. However, to my surprise, in November of 2021, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, a video was posted to his channel titled Return to the Island of the Dead. I remember the moment of sudden goosebumps at the realization of the classic Frankie thumbnail being featured at the top of my recommendations list. I remember feeling nostalgic and happy to see him return, but I found myself struggling to watch the full video. It wasn't that the video wasn't very good, but it was just a sign that I had grown up and changed. What 30 year old me enjoyed wasn't the same as 24 year old me and I think that was the same for most people. Today, just over 2 million people have seen his return to YouTube video, but viewership would slowly decline over the next 12 videos he uploaded, with one of the videos only seeing 260,000 views. After uploading 13 videos on a range of content, Frankie would upload his final video, now titled, currently finding what want to make, will return when happy, slash have a plan, not sure when that is yet. As someone that has experienced the feeling of one video doing really well and the next one not so well, the roller coaster of emotions can be mentally draining, which leads you to questioning, is it worth spending so much of your free time at making content that no one is interested in watching? And I think Frankie may have made his choice. If you head over to any of his videos and sort the comments by most recent, it's full of questions of where has Frankie gone and how they missed their favourite content creator. Over 10 years later and he still maintains a loyal fan base, reminiscing of the same times I did when I was 13 years old, and it's safe to say we miss you Frankie and wish you all the best. As of today, Frankie hasn't uploaded since January 2022, and maybe one day soon we will see the re-return of the Bambi King. Now, if you enjoyed watching, please be sure to like and subscribe as it helps YouTube recommend the video for others to see. Consider becoming a member on YouTube to help me buy more Monster Energy drinks to get me through writing another script at 3am, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.